I get a lot of inspiration from my dreams. I lucid dream a lot. I'm dreaming and I'm walking through this field. It's a normal country back road that you would see around here with this big field in the middle of this giant oak tree. So pearly red onions hanging off of it. I took one down and took a bite and I said one from the onion tree and woke up, you know, instantly and that stuff disappears like that. So you know, you just have to go and write that stuff down. And that sort of just spurred the idea of loosely shaping the rest of the album around it without making like a story out of it. But it just seemed really bizarre that like, why would I dream about something like that? It still doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to, you know? My grandpa had a bunch of country albums. He was letting me borrow them so I could record them onto CD. So it got me into the act of just sitting down and you have to listen to it in real time and space out the songs with the remote. So every time the song would end, you would stop it and press record again so it would track onto the CD how it would on the album. Getting into the art of just sitting down listening to an album it inspired me to keep collecting and there's just so much music that's already been there and gone that nobody's heard of. When you see a cool album cover, you pick it up, that might be the best thing you've ever heard. Um, big collector, as you can see. 1200 vinyl, um, not too much of a stickler on condition, it just has to play. They are all, all organized, which is good, so I'm able to find most everything by alphabetical. Some of the spines you can't necessarily read. This is probably my favorite album ever, at least as far as uh, meaning. You know, it gives you all the feels. It's, it's got such a good story behind it. There's a film about it called I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, which is also the title of the first song. But the noise is uh, immense. You can listen to this album 20 times and still pick up something new on every listen. I think that's pretty unique for an album. Oh, here's one. Not, not one of my more favorites, but this is the first vinyl we ever got made. Funky Town. Uh, my girlfriend drew the cover. It's got some swans on the front. The inside's really cool. But we are making vinyl of the onion tree that will be here in October. But this was a pretty proud achievement. Uh, for someone who had been into vinyl for years, getting my own made was a big step. had a high school band for a while, but after some members had moved away, I decided I wanted to pursue more of my songwriting and singing and go into uh, yeah, just more of a solo project slash collaboration group, so it's called The Ryan Experience. I have things that I want to put out there, whether it be for fun, there's usually nothing too serious about it. Just with today's uh, technology, how easy it is to do your own recordings and get creative. You know, I can do whole tracks just by myself, and I think that's really fun as far as a creative standpoint. You don't always have to do something serious, you know? Mm -hmm. so if you're not having fun doing it, there's really not a point of doing it. Life's not always supposed to be super serious. Something to keep my body Genre is bullshit. You'll fit a better niche, you'll get booked at more places. People won't be as scared of you if you call yourself a certain genre or stick to a certain sound, but it's not gonna be as fun. At least I don't think so. I mean, you sort of have to get creative with matching up different genres and making your own. I think putting a label on things sometimes can sort of ruin things. Pretty much just sticking to what you wanna do, you're gonna get a lot more fulfillment out of it. And you'll get to say, you know, I made something more unique. I wrote whatever weird songs, I stuck with it. You pretty much just have to not care what people think. 
It's hard too when you talk to your friends and you try and get input and you always want to listen to them and try and feed off them but you can't let you can't let other people run your life. You should still try and do what you want or sometimes find a compromise of the two. Your friends mean well but you know your best interest is really uh, your own heart. Let's talk about Lowell, because I feel like you're kind of, uh, you're kind of in a way the, the face of the Lowell music scene. I mean, this town is my home, uh, never lived anywhere else. It's a quiet community, you know, growing up, not much to complain about as you get older. It's the people, which is what I end up telling a lot of people when they first come here is, you know, 60% of the people who live in this town are genuinely really good people, and they mean well. And there's the 40% that are much louder than the 60%. Bad apple ruins the whole batch, bad onion ruins the whole batch, you know. It's uh, very much true, but otherwise it's a uh, pretty quiet river town and I like that I'm close to Grand Rapids so I can go out and play shows there and kind of hide away and do my studio recording here and not really be bugged. new album I'm working on is going to be the first thing fully done in the new space. It's called Upstairs Man Studios. I got some new mics and some better software and slowly but surely upgrading, uh, getting my own equipment that's personally mine so I don't have to worry about borrowing things from other people. I've done mixing in the past with different uh, sessions I've done on my YouTube channel, uh, Ryan Shine. It's also my website, Shine with a Y. But I'm looking at, you know, once I get this next album out, just kind of taking a step back and playing more of that producer role for people like myself who you know, don't necessarily have a whole lot of money and want to make something creative and have time to sit down and you know, if you want to work on an organ part all day, by all means, you know, you can do that. You know, just having the liberty to experiment and create something you didn't know. That's the coolest part to me is with my writing process, I'll start with a song usually just guitar and vocal, key and vocal. And I'm like, well, this is kind of cool. Like, let's see where this can go. And you bring it into a recording setting where you're able to just lay your stuff up and you're like, wow, I never thought it would turn out sounding like this. And that's kind of the part that kind of drives me to keep going is when you have all these surprises that essentially come out of yourself that you never thought would happen. You know, it's not like you're getting together and fully working out a song and going to record it and you're like, oh, I know what this is going to sound like. Every song you start, it's going to turn into something a little different than what you might think. 1968 Con Organ makes all sorts of weird noises. Yamaha synth. This is the name of the studio, Upstairs Man. Uh, and this is the main studio. Got our keyboard here, 88 key, good for most anything. Call this the Fun Station. This is my songwriting keyboard. It's super portable, battery powered. And it's supposed to be a kid's toy, but for a kid's toy, it has this digital synthesizer setting. Actually, sounds pretty cool. Oh, take the bass off. Uh, this is a really cool electric I got from my buddy Justin. It's got piezo pickups in it, which is really cool, hidden inside, as well as a Telecaster configuration. Interesting headstock. It's not in tune, classic. Yeah. I use this uh, a lot of the times for gigs and then for recording, it's pretty great. But uh, yeah, it works pretty good for full band tracking, which is what we're gonna do later today. And it's just an average day for me, hanging out. whole year of 2020, I was able to do three major releases, and the position I'm in with the space that I have is equally as entertaining to me. I had so much fun just maybe having a, a small number of people or a lot of it collaborating uh, over email to where I was able to still make albums and make songs. And for the first time, uh, being able to use songs as they were written, because a lot of the time, like even with my first album, I'd written the songs three, four years ago and they're just getting on an album, which isn't abnormal for me to just kind of stockpile the songs. But being able to essentially write a song and record it, you know, the next day, 
was very freeing because it's it feels a lot more fresh that way. It hasn't been sitting around. So that, you know, was very entertaining, but the live shows are always a fun environment. You get to see your friends and, you know, you get that sense of community when everyone's there and watching the actual music, you know, they're not talking to someone next to them or playing on their phone. They're like actually observing what's happening. So really connecting to the music is a complete escape. Finally at a point, you know, I've been doing this about seven years to where I'm making a, somewhat of a revenue to where I could possibly even survive off it in a way. You know, they're not the most glamorous shows, but they're still really fun. And then I do have good chances like uh, Pyramid Scheme and other bigger venues that I will bring the whole band to, and that's always awesome, you know, getting the other people involved. Because that's my favorite part is the collaboration aspect, but the shows have been great. Just being able to get out there, people are very receptive to just hearing live music again. And it's, uh, it's hopeful, you know? We're doing a recording session later today, but working on a sort of thematic album called uh, The Hits. And usually, you know, when you hear that, you think of greatest hits, but I thought it would be funny to do a bunch of new songs and call it The Hits as if, like, you know, somewhat of a sellout. And I don't know, I just thought it'd be a kind of a fun thing and making an album that's different from my other ones as far as it's not going to be exactly thematic. And I'm thinking of splitting it into like a volume one, volume two, packaging it as a two CD set as far as here's more of a fun disc with raw takes and messing around in the studio and here's like you know some more polished pieces and the idea is going to essentially be that you don't have to sit down and listen to it you don't have to listen to the whole thing you know you can start at one track skip to another and just see what you like off of it see what the hits are to you Thank <laughs> you.